This is the story of Maserati Rick, born Richard Earl Carter on July 31st, 1959, and raised in a post-industrial Detroit, Michigan, following the decline of the auto industry and the widespread of white flight from the inner city. He grew up on the same street as future boxing champion, Thomas the Hitman Herms, near Detroit City's airport. The city's five-day 1967 riot would take place just days before his eighth birthday. Carter joined the car theft ring as a teen and purchased a BMW with the profits. In 1977, he also purchased a pot of blue Mercedes Benz and was convicted of receiving stolen goods the same year. After his release in 1982, Carter made his foray into the boxing world, working as Herm's towel boy and working his way up to boxing bodyguard and manager for his own brother, Greg Carter. During this period, he would mingle with the likes of legends, Sugar Ray Leonard, and legendary boxer promoter, Don King at the Detroit's world famous Crunk's Gym. Carter and lifelong friend, fellow Detroit drug lord, Demetrius Holloway, founded a drug trafficking organization to fill the vacuum left by Sylvester Seal Murray. By the early 1980s, Murray, known in the streets as the S-Man, had established himself as the preeminent supplier of heroin, cocaine, and marijuana in the Detroit area. His clientele included the notorious YBI and Pony Down organization. However, a conviction in December of 1982, following a major narcotic sweep that also brought down the leadership of YBI, included 41 of his top lieutenants, thus avoiding a huge demand for illicit substance throughout the drug community of Detroit. Carter began selling heroin in 1983, and by 1985, he made a significant name for himself in the Motor City. Counting among his contemporaries, the likes of the Chambers brothers, the Davis family, but remained of the YBI and the Curry Boys organization. Carter and partner Holloway soon consolidated their power by making significant alliances. They ensured that the flow of narcotics would continue by aligning themselves with the 16-year-old drug supplier, Richard White Boy Rick Bursch who was dating the wife of convicted drug kingpin, Johnny Curry, a niece of Detroit's then mayor, Coleman Young. The two also assured themselves that they would be protected from rivals by incorporating Reginald Rockin', Rockin' Reggie Brown's murder for hire gang into the fold. Carter financed Brown and his brother, Ezra Wizard Brown, Gregory Ghost Brown, and Terrence Boogaloo Brown. He kept the brothers furnished with the bullets proof vest high-powered assault rifles, automatic pistols, and high-priced defense attorneys. With the enforcement arm in place, Carter expanded his supply chain by securing ties on both East and West Coast by way of Miami and Los Angeles. Federal investigators credit the organization with becoming the first drug ring to take over the I-75 corridor for use as a pipeline for transporting narcotics from Detroit to Miami. Acquired his name at the age of 25. He was said to have been the first African American of his generation in the Detroit area to own the Maserati. Contrary to popular opinion, his luxury car of choice was the Mercedes Benz. However, a friendly rivalry with business partner and lifelong friend Holloway spurred Carter to take a look beyond the German Benzes and BMWs that were already known for to buy one of the Italian automaker models from Ohio. Carter's arrival in a new Maserati at the Detroit nightclub shortly after making the purchase is reported to have direct inspiration for the nickname. While Carter's sole official residence was listed as a modest bungalow on the Birdwood Avenue in the northwest section of Detroit, he also possessed a lavish riverfront condo in a flat near East Jefferson Avenue and Alta Road said to be forfeited like a military bunker. Carter laundered his earnings from narcotics through several small businesses, including hair salons, barbershops, and car washes. Reported car washes sold as a dual role as they not only provided a steady stream of income, which served to conceal his true income, but they also shield large transactions. A common practice featured vehicle being driven inside the tunnel, empty and exited full of cash and drugs. 1987. Carter was the main drug supplier to the whole east side of Detroit. Carter and the best friends also managed to expand beyond Detroit to control other cities such as Kalamazoo, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Senegal, and Port Huron. 
group's reputation proceeded and its members could be spotted driving late model Volvos and wearing the trademark black jackets bearing the name Best Friends. Before reaching his 30th birthday, Carter had become a multi-millionaire. His net worth was estimated to have been in excess of 20 million. His rise to the top, however, did not come peacefully. Carter's organization was linked to over 100 homicides in the greater Detroit area. Around this time, lifelong friend and business partner, Demetrius Holloway is rumored to have had an affair with the mother of Carter's child, Tracy Cohen. However, Carter's biggest rivalry during this time was his former childhood friend and business associate, Edward Big Ed Hanser. Hanser started his criminal career as a small-time marijuana dealer, receiving his supply from his childhood associates, Carter and Holloway. Eventually, Hanser made a name for himself in law enforcement, becoming a major narcotics trafficker in his own right. There is some dispute as the origin of the feud between Hanser and Carter. While some attribute the hostilities to a debt owed to Carter from Big Ed, others trace the bad blood to Hanser, expansion into territory already held by Carter. Still others describe the tension between Hanser and Carter as an exclusive supplier in favor of an outside connection in California. Whatever the source may have been, the conflict which initially manifested itself through rumored unflattered words, Big Ed is said to have claimed that his nickname was given to him by Carter's mother. In the summer of 1987, it progressed to a public face-to-face -face argument in the unisex hair salon owned by Hansard and eventually led to shootouts and murder attempts between the two. In all, Carter is said to have made three attempts on Big Ed's life. In one incident, the exchange of automatic gunfire resulted in Hansburg being shot in the stomach and left to recuperate for months. When questioned by police, Hansard refused to name his attackers instead declaring that he'd handled it himself. In an effort to escape police pressure, Big Ed temporarily relocated to Yazoo City, Mississippi. Big Ed's drug running operation continued while he was away and during arrest for weapons violation, he was quoted as telling the arresting officers, I am going to get Maserati rigged and then I'm going to get you. Not long after returning to Detroit, Hanser reportedly participated in a drive-by of Carter's mother's home while she was standing on the front porch holding Carter's two-year-old son. Two months later, Big Ed tried again. This time the drive-by target was the mother of Carter's son. Hanser, however, got the address wrong and instead shot up the house belonging to the next-door neighbor of his intended victim. On September 10, 1988, a shootout ensued outside of Carter's Car wash was left Carter wounded in the stomach and answered and an associate shot in the arm. None of the participants cooperated with police investigators. Two days later, while Carter was being treated for his injuries, he sustained in the shooting allegedly one of Hanser's enforcers, Roger the Hitman Parker, in his hotel room. At Mount Carmel Mercy Hospital, the 29-year-old was officially pronounced dead at 601 from gunshot wounds to the face. The assailant Parker was reputed to be the third man present during Carter and Hanson's final confrontation. Hanson himself had an alibi as he was in police custody for unlawful possession of a firearm during the time of the shooting. Hanson denied any involvement in the shooting and simply confessed to investigators that he once thrown a brick through the window of one of Carter's car washes. Carter's murder became the first time that there was a shooting inside the hospital in his 50 year history. The circumstances of the killing resulted in a permanent change in the hospital policy throughout the city and increased security measures and screening for visitors. Mere hours after Carter's demise, he was named as a defense witness in the trial of another Motor City drug trafficker. Carter was laid to rest in a $16,000 custom-made casket designed to look like a Mercedes-Benz, complete with the working lights and spinning wheels. He was buried at M. Wood Cemetery in his native Detroit. Carter's lifelong girlfriend, Tracy Cohen, was eventually convicted on drug-related charges and sentenced to a minimum for 20 years in prison. Richard White Boy Rick Rershey also were convicted on drug charges and sentenced to life in prison eight months prior to Carter's death. Reginald Rockin' Reggie Brown would be sentenced to life in prison just four months after worship. On September 17, 1990, Carter's oldest brother Clyde and his girlfriend Patricia Scott was shot to death by an assailant using a 9mm handgun upon exiting his truck to pick up their one-year-old son. The baby was unharmed 
The next month, Demetrius Holloway was shot to death while shopping in his favorite clothing store in downtown Detroit. Logic Parker was tried and acquitted of the murders of both Richard Carter and Demetrius Holloway.